Please sit. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It is also the feast of Julian of Norwich, and it is also Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And the same to you. There's a little joke about um, a little boy who was in a cemetery with his mother. Mommy asked, the boy asked, do ever two people are buried in the same grave? She replied, of course not, dear. Why would you think that? So the little boy responded. The tombstone back there said, here lies a lawyer and an honest man. <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today for your word. Your word that brings life as we follow our Savior as the Great Shepherd. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today being a special day for us at St. Julian, Julian of Norwich, the story of Tabitha um, with her, her name and also Dorcas, her Greek name, should be of interest to us. Tabitha is a disciple who is active. She just doesn't talk, but leads by actions. Like many of you here, or many of us here at St. Julian, she has a distinct devotion to doing good works and performing acts of charity. She is committed to helping others, not just at certain times of the year, such as Pentecost or Christmas. But when we look at the life of Tabitha, her devotion was like a mother. How we today, as we recognize mothers in our community, her love for the community was consistent. And men, do forgive me a little bit today as I focus a little bit on, on mothers and, and we look at Tabitha and, and saw her work flesh it out a, a little bit this morning. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, man. <laughs> this consistent devotion makes an impact on the lives of those who were around Tabitha. And when Tabitha dies, the community of believers... They are stricken by the void that is left in their world. But the widows of her congregation do not just cry for her. You see, Tabitha was a pillar in that community. They were thinking about the situation as it pertained to the, the good works that she did in, her, in their community. They were on display. Her great love for serving God's people speaks for her. What a testimony. Even when we are rendered silent, God is able to speak through us. God's love is evident because we have answered the call to serve. And today, a day as we reflect on our patron saint, as we reflect on, on mothers, this example that we have today, along with that of the Good Shepherd, is one that perhaps we could look forward to emulating as we go forward in our lives. When Tabitha dies, the disciples sent word to Peter. 
And then Peter responded without delay. Tabitha is already dead. Yet, there's an urgent call. Was Peter just going to come and pay his last respects and mourn with those who were mourning for a faithful servant? Or have the disciples heard of what Peter was doing in the community and wanted him to do the same in their community? Were they expecting a miracle? Those are some of the questions that the people of the day had to respond to. And those are some of the questions that we will have to respond to today on our own faith journey. We do not know. But it's clear that Peter's presence is important. Remember that in last week's Gospel, where Jesus had to make sure that he was sure about Peter. And then he asked him, Peter, do you love me three times? And so we, we've moved on from there, and now there's some certainty about Peter's role in building up the church. Yes, Peter walked and talked with Jesus. And he would have seen the various miracles that Jesus would have performed. And remember in the Gospels, that where Jesus said to, to his disciples, that you too will perform such miracles. Peter gets up and goes immediately. And just as Jesus would have done, when Peter arrived, and he saw, as they would say in those days, a commotion going on, but people were mourning. Peter entered the room, and he put others outside. Jesus did the same. And then, what did he do? He knelt down and prayed. Jesus would have done the same. Remember Jesus doing the same thing in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember Jesus doing this, the same in healing and, and bringing back to life Jairus' daughter. Peter followed Jesus closely. We today are called to follow Jesus closely. We are called as his disciples to emulate the examples that Jesus left for us. That where Jesus being the good shepherd, the kind acts of love that he displayed while he was here on earth with us. He left those as examples for us. As Peter knelt down to pray, and bringing Tabitha back to life, he held her hand, and once again he offered her to her community. At times as we go through life, we need someone to hold us by our hand, and to lead us back in the community. And when that happens, when it, those persons who might have been lost in a particular community, when it, their acts of love and kindness, just as Jesus dis displayed, and people are brought back into the community, the community that was hurting, the community that felt pain, that pain and hurt is removed. And the community is happy once again. Peter did that for that community. In welcoming Tabitha back, we today, as we emerge from the COVID-19, 
we will have to welcome persons back. There are some of you who would have been here throughout the journey. But there are others who would come back. And you have to welcome them back. We have to welcome them back. We have to hold them by the hand and to say, yes, we still love you. As Peter emulates Jesus, the Good Shepherd, he leads us along right pathways of righteousness for what he wants us to do for him. In leading us in right pathways of life, as disciples like Peter and Tabitha and indeed and Julian, the acts of love generated here among this community, acts of love among friends, among loved ones, among children and our siblings, even among our enemies. These acts of righteousness leads us into right relationships with God. Being a disciple is not just about the miracles we see and experience. It is about seeing God in the ordinary places that might not like but that might not look so attractive. It is about allowing God to work in our lives. No matter where we are or what's going on, God can show up in the most unlikely places and perform wonders, even in situations that it may appear dormant and dead. This community here at St. Julian continues to emerge from the doldrums of COVID-19. Start over program the backpack program, and others to come on, on stream. We have the opportunity to act like the Good Shepherd in offering love and care to others in our community. And as I end in this reflection, there's one basic question that is going to remain with us. As we have in our life journey here in this community, do we have that relationship with Jesus Christ? Just as Peter and the disciples had with Jesus. So that when anyone in our community is affected, we can lend them a hand and bring them back into the community. My siblings, being a disciple means knowing that God is still active in our lives and in our communities. Let us today, as we emulate the Good Shepherd, as we think of the kind and generous and mystical acts of our patron, Saint Julian, let us go out in the community and welcome others back into the fold. Amen.